Hey, how's it going guys? Zedai here. So, about a few days ago, I made a video regarding a Bungie with the layoff situation. Now, unfortunately, we did not know too much information regarding that. But nevertheless, Jason Schreier has quite enlightened us with his own article. Now, I want to get some information and details from it, a little bit more of a bullet point style. And yet also, if you want to read it for yourself this whole, whole article, basically I will leave down links below in the description to the uh, Bloomberg page. So such as you guys already know, Bungie has laid off 220 employees and 155 of those employees have transitioned to Sony Interactive Entertainment. And also, with around 75 employees moved to a separate group to work on a project called Gummy Bears. Now, Jason Schreier spoke about the 10 current and former Bungie employees. They have mentioned that the company basically grew too fast, right, and it tried to develop too many projects at once, spreading resources too thin rather than prioritizing its chief make moneymaker, Destiny 2. So it was quite an ambitious growth, right? Some of the big misses led to Bungie to lose a lot of money over the last two years, forcing the developers to cut costs, freeze salaries, and shed hundreds of workers. Now, regarding why there's a mention of last two years is because of the acquisition with Sony. I will get into that in a little bit. So a lot of people, and majority of them in fact, has mainly pointed their fingers at one specific individual, Chief Executive Officer Pete Parson, basically saying that he's failed to take accountability for his own actions and that he's been way too overly optimistic about the projects that he wanted to create and make. There were even a mention of a bungee magic, as I quote. It's a mantra similar that we have actually heard from that was mentioned Bioware magic or arcane magic. Well, which basically meant that it's going to have an inevitable fall. So Sony, as mentioned, has purchased Bungie for 3.6 billion dollars, mainly for the support and guide with live service titles of their own as well. So Bungie hired hundreds of new staff members and begun making many incubational projects, including mobile versions of Destiny, remakes of old games and new franchises. And due to this, it all resulted and basically, like mentioned already, so much things going on in one plate that it just became unbearable and unattainable. So there was even a meeting with Parsons said that the company is losing money and that the revenue missed by about 45%. It was about the time at the end of 2023 and Bungie had a layoff of 100 employees back in October. Insane just to think about it and how much and how often this just continues on happening. Now, the Lifefall expansion for Destiny 2 unfortunately has failed to impress the fans, and Marathon is extraction shooter struggles to come together when it was already in a well-development phase. And including that the Final Shape expansion just recently released about a month, well, a little more than a month ago, it actually needed to be delayed. First, it was supposed to release sometime in February of 2024, and of course, as you guys know it, it's released instead in June of 2024. Some thought that this may result in a great product, and it did receive great reviews though. But unfortunately, that uh, unfortunately that just did not help, and people were still laid off. Well, even though this layoff situation and planning was resulted even before the final shapes release. Now, let's get into Payback. Payback is a project that was bet quite big, like really, really big. And I fell through, unfortunately. Luke Smith and Mark Noseworthy were in hell and they left Bungie. Not due to the layoffs, but because of their own decision. That's important to clarify. So Bungie is in a pretty big hellhole, more or less. Even though one of the credible and reputable people of Bungie, like Luke Smith and Mark Noseworthy, and yet they just left the company due to their own mismanagement. Payback is set in Destiny's universe, and it will be quite different from regular Destiny. It actually will be a third-person shooter instead, and allows players to use the franchise's characters to explore a large world while cooperating to battle monsters and solve puzzles. Now, the main inspiration was actually a Warframe and Genshin Impact to create this game. It's interesting to see how much of a diversion would it be. 
Now, still, with this kind of description, being that it's a third-person perspective game, actually is intriguing. But Bungie is not exactly known for that. What Bungie is known, having fantastic first-person shooting mechanics. So it kind of will be interesting to see what kind of direction would it go if the game is obviously a third-person perspective instead. What else would they have by having something speciality that Bungie has in terms of the first-person shooting? Now, several internet rumors over the last few months have suggested that Payback is a sequel to Destiny 2, but though it isn't, just to clarify. Well, just about two months ago, Bungie cancelled Payback to prioritize on Destiny 2 and moving the bulk of its team to Marathon, which is actually being targeted of releasing in 2025. Now, company is also plans to continue updating Destiny 2, although it will no longer be pursuing regular paid expansions as it did in the past. A company leader told the attendees that the sales of each expansion has declined over year over year, including June's The Final Shape expansion, so they will be moving away from the annual release models. Some people were quite optimistic about the vision of Destiny 2, especially being that it's under a new director uh, by the name of Tyson Green, a Bungie veteran who took the helm earlier this year. Now, Bungie will look into attract players with similar scale content drops, modeled after its Into the Light. It's a well-received free update in, that came out in April, and that added a new mode to the game, and actually was, well, Destiny people were very happy with this content. Bungie will aim to release it for free along with the overhauls to with the activities that will hopes that will appeal to the hardcore players. Some plans for the future including storyline and will feature of uh, characters and worlds that wasn't yet explored within Destiny. So it's actually very kind of concerning I want to say since Bungie is losing and they're in the red where are they going to get the cash then if the content's going to be free? Like, are they going to make some kind of pay-to-win elements? There's a little bit of a mention that Payback has been a little bit of an inspiration received from Warframe and Genshin Impact. Is that the direction that they want to go with, with Destiny 2? It just makes it kind of odd and maybe intriguing as well, but I don't want to say intriguing at this point since Bungie is in a, pretty much in a big shithole. Still, nevertheless, I don't think this is a good model. I think that actually hardcore fans instead will leave Destiny 2 and as if that isn't already happening. I already kind of alluded to it a little bit, so I want to touch on regarding Destiny 3. Well, it was actually never in the development, and instead Bungie is looking to create something of a smoother onboarding process for Destiny 2, such as rebranding to attract new players that, who would basically be too turned off from the game because of this feeling of impenetrable fortress for the newcomers. I'm talking about especially with how much of an RPG and MMO elements that Destiny 2 already has. It's very not very appealing for the newcomers. On top of that, they got pretty appalling kind of tutorial and introduction welcoming the new players. It's just that's why Destiny 2 always struggled to gain new people into their content. And so you really have to learn and just kind of, you really have to be on board. You kind of have to sign up for this sort of a contract, if that makes sense. So as such, Destiny 3 was never in development. It's so such an unfortunate uh, news, I actually want to say. But nevertheless, with how Destiny 2 has been going through a roller coaster of experiences, downfalls, uphills as well. Some of the expansions were very well received. Some expansions were very poorly received. Like I said, Destiny 2 is a roller coaster. It's not very good news. And it just seems like this roller coaster will fall off the line. It's already happening. What we're seeing here, Bungie is hoping too much on two things. The continuity of Destiny 2 and hope that Marathon lifts them off. If it doesn't, I don't know what's going to happen. I do know that Sony is going to be completely taking over Bungie. And yet I'm just thinking, $3.6 billion. Why? That is so ridiculously expensive to purchase this. I mean, they lied. Bungie lied. Pete has lied over promising things that they wanted to do and make within Bungie. And now they had to delay everything. They had to cancel everything. They had to lay off people, employees. It's just break so many promises. It's not a good look at all. And 
if Marathon and Destiny 2 does not lift off in some ways, quite significant ways in fact, I can tell anyway that Bungie is no longer going to be the same, but maybe it's for the best, I do not know. Because so far, so many games within Sony Interactive Entertainment, PlayStation, have been a hitter. They have been a banger. Maybe it's good news. I don't know. But what Bungie does need is different higher-up management. They need to fire Pete. And they need to have new blood on board within Bungie. Maybe they need to even rebrand the whole Bungie name, in fact. Not just Destiny 2. I don't know. At this point, I feel that they need to start making something new. They need the funds, obviously. Hopefully, Sony is willing to, you know, provide that. And of course, with the acquisition and the promises, I kind of doubt that they will. I just don't see any good road for Bungie. Even if one of the things will pop off, but for how long? For how long? Marathon will be success. It will bring in the funds. But again, for how long? Man, this is very disappointing news to see company that I was a part of a few years back, maybe a little bit more than even half a decade ago. I was really into Destiny, Destiny 2 included, but of course I fell off now, but nevertheless, it's quite sad to see this. I really hope that Bungie just steps up. I really hope that Pete Parsons and the higher ups are actually going to get their shit together, but I'm not holding my breath, honestly. Anyway guys, that's all my thoughts were. I just wanted to have a little bit of a chat regarding this whole situation, especially thanks to Jason Schreier, uh, shining light to the situation a little bit more, giving us more information and breakdowns, kind of makes it a little bit more intriguing and you're also kind of, uh, just makes it more clarity, brings in at least. All right guys, thank you so much for watching, like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys all later.